How's it going guys? Welcome to my channel again. Today I'm reviewing something different and some of you guys, I'm sure you guys are photographers, especially if you need something for the run and gun kind of thing, which I do as well. Today I'm introducing you guys a brand new release from Angler. This is a soft box, but this is actually a fast box 24 inches, a brand new release from them. And when they say fast box, they ain't kidding. Check this out. Done. I just put up one of those tube LED lights here so it looks pretty for the video instead of the whole thing being dark since this is only flash stuff, right? And they actually make adapters here for all three most popular flashes, which is the uh, Canon 600EX RT, the Profoto A1XR flash, and of course the Godox V1 series, which I'm gonna be using with the Canon 1DX Mark II. So today I'm reviewing the softbox here, nothing too complicated for this review. And uh, the usual disclaimer, Angler sent me this softbox, so we should check it out. And I, of course I get to keep the uh, softbox. And that doesn't alter the way I review the product. If there's something I don't like, I'll let you know. And also they get to see the video the same time you guys do. There's no script, there's no approval to be sent. I just upload the video on YouTube and that's pretty much it. Now besides, this is one of the fastest softboxes that I've seen. You know, I also love the fact that the other softbox, they have that system with the uh, 16 rods that you, you can actually um, assemble one by one that's actually pretty quick but what I don't like are the soft boxes that you have to have the speed ring and then you know set up all those rods there that I don't like even if it is a small one yeah it goes very quick but nothing as quick as this here right now at the making of this video here there are no links as soon as they become available I'll make sure to put the uh, link on the description here I'm not even sure they I think they also make a 20 inch version so again what I'm reviewing here is the 24 inch and this particular size here I like is because it's not too small not too big for run and gun it fits everywhere it's very easy to carry I think 24 inches is a cool size now the 20 inch I would use with a slave on the back for hair light or you know lighting a background or something like that but this for the front element which by the way they are non-removable you cannot remove the uh, the middle baffle or the uh, external one everything is like fixed you cannot remove that now the construction of the soft box here as soon as you open you see there's no wrinkles on the uh, fabric I don't know what kind of fabric that is it's nylon with something mixed but it actually looks pretty as you can see there's no like wrinkle anywhere when you purchase the soft box it's gonna come with the soft box itself and also this carrying bag right here which the material is very similar to uh, most tripod bags outside or light stand bags and inside here it has a uh, semi rubbery kind of material here it's very nice and grippy and you can carry this uh, bag this way or this way right here they also make a bunch of accessories for the soft box here in case you're looking for a grid, right? To uh, shoot in tight spaces if you don't want the light to hit the background or whatever, if you want uh, light spill control. They make a grid for this. I'm using a 28-inch uh, parabolic soft box here as my key light. And the grid that comes with it is also a very nice grid. But they also come with this little cellophane paper that, you know, every single one of the soft boxes, they come with this thing here. Now the packaging for their grid here, they come with this little Ziploc kind of thick plastic here in which the uh, grid is actually the same exact shape to fit here. So this particular grid here, especially on a large soft box, I need to actually f uh, place this thing on the top of the soft box itself and use it as a table to kind of uh, rotate the thing around until it forms a circle kind of thing. And to be lucky enough to fit back on this plastic here, if you guys have these grids, you know how that works. But this particular grid here is made of a different material, is made of a nylon inside. Fast box, even the grid, when you open, right, it looks like this, when you put it away, Falls like that. Then you open this case here, put the thing inside, zip it up, done. Now whether you use Godox, Canon, or the Profoto, I have all three. If you got Canon, they got it. If you have Godox or the Profoto, they got it too. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys the three options they make for your flash to uh, stick on the back of the soft box here. So you have here the option for the Profoto A1, the option for the Godox V1, and also the option for most flashes here, which by the way, I have the Canon 600 EXRT. But if you have a Nikon flash, for example, it should fit here as long as the flash is in the same type of size here and everything. Now this particular one here for my Canon 600, it comes with the uh, compact flash adapter here in case you have a smaller flash. All you have to do is to uh, insert the flash here. Now if you have the Canon 600, for example, the first thing that you gotta do is to remove this adapter here that's in here. 
and then put this away. You're not going to need this. And on top, he, it comes with a lock mechanism here. And the rubber that is inside here is extremely gummy. So when you press it, it's very soft and very grippy. It's not like a standard hard rubber. So this is actually going to grip a flash very well. And I'm pretty comfortable to have my expensive flash right here because once you actually lock this in here, the flash is not going to go anywhere. Now, the same way you attach your lens to your camera, usually there's a little ball there on the lens that tells you where to uh, install the lens. Same exact thing here with the Canon flash, whatever flash is the size here. You just align this with the, uh, the, the dot there and one hand holds here, the other one holds the flash. You wanna hear at least three clicks, possibly a fourth. There you go, it's not going anywhere. To release, press this button here gently, flashes out. Same exact thing if you have a Profora A1X like I do here. Again, observe the uh, little white circle here. You're gonna align exactly what you see here with the uh, softbox, and then you lock it. And here's your flash. This has a very strong magnet. All you have to do is to place your flash facing this way, upwards, right? Here. And that's all. And then you can actually move the flash here. The magnet is very strong. You don't have to even hold the flash here. This thing is very strong. And to take it out, avoid like, you know, swinging like this because you don't want to scratch your flash. Just pull out straight and the flash is out. Again, to release, press down this button here. Now the same thing with the Godox V1, you're probably going to be holding already the flash in one hand. Notice that I can actually do this with a single hand, just wash the little dot there to align with the uh, soft box, and then you lock it down. This also features a very strong magnet here, place the flash facing upwards this way, there, and then you can actually adjust your flash here, and again, hold the soft box here and pull out straight. The soft box features a grip pistol kind of thing here, so you can actually go all the way up like this, or all the way down like that. And this is not a stepless thing, it has a little teeth in there, so it stops right here. So either this way, or this way, or that way, or that way, but it stays, it doesn't move. So to uh, move it again, you just press this uh, thing here, and the desired position, if it is this way, you can do it. Now to unlock is very simple, you just grab with your left hand this uh, grip here, and then you twist. And then to put it back here, you just twist right, and uh, just so you know, if you use very cheap stands like one of those little Amazon basic stands, this is not gonna uh, lock right. So this is a B&H stand here. Doesn't cost a lot of money. I think it's about 50 some dollars. As long as it is a good stand, you have no problem fitting this on any stand. Like this one here. Lock it and good to go. Now when you actually transport the stand, avoid holding from the grip here and also avoid holding from the lock because a lot of people are going to be tempted to do, I don't know, it just feels comfortable to grab it like this, but I don't recommend because you can actually accidentally unlock this somehow and then there you go, the stand goes this way and the box goes the other way, right? Especially if you do a lot of shooting outdoors, something that you definitely don't want to do is to have a flimsy stand like this one here, one of those little... Amazon basic stands because wind outdoors and everything is pretty much uh, things can go out of control and then your whole equipment is on the floor. And this flash here, which is the uh, Profoto A1X, this thing costs over $800. So you, don't, you definitely don't want to have this thing falling on the concrete or on the beach and on the sand. So make sure you use a decent stand, something that opens wide. And of course, bring some sandbags to make sure, or even better, have an assistant holding here because every single time I go outside, I don't even bother with sand bags. I have actual people holding this thing the whole time. I'm paying them this many dollars an hour just to hold my stand, but it's actually a lot cheaper than replacing an $800 flash like this, right? Another cool thing that I like here is because you can actually quickly unlock out of the stand and you can actually have your assistant to hand hold this thing. So instead of like, you know, position the, the light like this, a little bit to the left or right, have the guy hold it like this he can do this in one second, whatever position that he wants. And this is actually pretty comfortable to hold. And this thing is incredibly light. I'm holding this thing here with my pinky. So it's really light. Of course, it's a soft box. You know? I don't expect it to be heavy unless you have a 80 inch parabolic soft box. And then you're talking about another type of thing here. And again, when you're taking this thing outside, make sure you have a friend or an assistant to hold this thing all the time. So if it is a little breezy, even have somebody here holding this thing here so the wind doesn't 
damage this, you know, because with the wind force, you know, who knows what can happen, right? Because I've been in some very windy situations, and the bigger the softbox, the more damage it can occur because of the size of the softbox, the more wind can actually grasp on the thing, right? You can actually make a background white, gray, or black, depending on the distance of the subject from the background, and also the distance from the light here. For example, if you put the light this close, the camera is going to see only this thing here. That's why the background, which is white, can actually turn black. If you want flat lighting, back away all the lights, everything is lit evenly. If you want those gorgeous pictures that you see, you don't even need to see the behind the scenes. You can tell how far away or how close the light is just by looking at the picture. If you put the light here, this uh, distance right here, again, you measure your lighting there, and then the exposure is whatever f-stop. As soon as you do this, just by this little distance here, you lost 75% of the light. I don't care if it is an aperture 600. You do your measurement here, you do this, 75% of the light is gone. And then when you walk away more and more, it's not going to matter much because when you are a particular distance, the fallout is actually so great that, you know, same thing with the uh, sound, for example. Let's say that uh, you're shooting a wedding, you're going to hate that the best man is actually having the microphone this far away from his mouth. Everything sounds very teeny. You bring the microphone close, you have that nice close proximity of the voice, and also all the background is eliminated because the sound pressure is so great coming from your mouth, the microphone can hear anything else. So the same thing that applies to the sliding here, for example. Let's say they have a white background there. You can actually make that background super white, evenly lit, or towards gray all the way to absolute black. For example, if you uh, aim the light this close, the intensity of the light is going to be so great here, the camera can't see what's in the background. That's why the background turns black. If you back out the light this way here, and then your exposure is going to change a little bit, and then that background is going to be gray. And then if you put the light all the way on the back there, it's going to light the whole room, it's going to light you and the background evenly, because the light fall out of that distance is huge. And then you have a white background, so you get the point here. So I've been talking a whole lot about the softbox here, but the review wouldn't be complete if I didn't actually show you guys the actual result of the quality of light that's going to be outputting from the softbox, and I got that cover as well. So I had my wife here to take a few pictures, so the setup was as follows. I had the softbox here as the main light. I just used another identical flash on the background as a hair light with a little um, honeycomb kind of thing, right? And this is acting as a main light, and I also I have an example here with this light set up this way here with the uh, softbox without grid, just the way it is. And again, another example here to show you guys with the grid to see the difference. So you control light spill and all the things. And I'm in Pennsylvania, about 70 miles from New York City, so it's pretty cold outside, but you know, I took the extra mile, I got in my car and I went downtown, uh, and then I shot um, a little something there was at night with a lot of lights on the trees to give you guys the other example, which is probably what you guys are gonna be doing anyway, with the nice little bokeh effect on the background with the, with the whole trees lit up and everything. So I was using just this light as the uh, main light on her face and everything else was uh, ambient lighting. So the example number one, the light is very close to her face, which gives that ultra soft lighting. Now if you want to back the light out for a wider shot, it's still going to give you a very nice diffused light, but in my opinion, my favorite way to do it is very close to the face, which gives the extra soft lighting. No grid was used outdoors because outdoors is a lot of space and she was in the middle of everything there, so there's no need to use a grid in that situation. Now in order to control light spill, if you have a tiny room, you definitely want to need the grid, and also if your walls are all white, it's going to be helping the light to bounce all over the place, so it's going to be a little bit difficult if you want to make a white background turn into black, even though you put the light very close to the subject, but still, light might be bouncing all over the place. So if you have a large studio, you don't even need the grid, just put the light close to the subject, far away from the background, the white background will turn black, it's that simple. So this is my home theater projection screen right here, I have my projector here, so of course my ceiling here happens to be black, which happens for the light to bounce less, but again, if your room is all white, it's going to be a little bit of a problem to achieve that result, but if you have a large room, no problem. Now with these three flashes here, you probably know how it works, but I'm not going to go into much in-depth detail here, I'm just going to show at least how to pair each one of those uh, flash brands here. So on the uh, transmitter here, you want to go to the menu, the first thing they want to know is to make sure the ID is set to any number other than off. So you click the set button here, then you have from off all the way to 99. So let's use the ID number one, press to confirm, 
exit by pressing this button here. Then you want to assign the group, group A to E. So let's set it to group A. Press to confirm. Then you want to press the zoom channel, press and hold. And then you access your channel here from channel 1 all the way to 32. So let's leave it channel 1, ID 1 and group A. Press to confirm, you're done here. Now over here, the first thing you want to do is press the Z looking button here that has the little symbol here. Make sure the display reads orange. And then you want to do your groups, which is going to be highlighting here. Same exact thing. So set your group A in this exercise. Press to confirm. And then the channel, channel 1. Make sure it's on channel 1 to match everything. Then finally you press the menu button, which is the one near this padlock here. And make sure you find your ID, which should be also 01. Press to confirm. Back it off here. And then you're ready to fire. Now the Pro Photo here is also super easy. Make sure you are on channel 1 here, for example. Channel 1. And make sure you're on group A. So you're all set here. There's no ID for this one here. Then on this flash here, simply press this middle button here. And then you have your air group. Rotate this button here. There you go. Press it. And then you make sure you're on group A. There you go. And the channel. Make sure on channel 1. And that's pretty much it. So when you fire, it goes off. Now next we have the Canon stuff here. I actually sold all my original Canon transmitter here because this thing is as good as the actual Canon. So I highly recommend this Young New YN E3 RT2, which is pretty awesome. So the first thing you want to do here is to press the mode button. So I want to leave it as manual, which you can change to whatever you want here, but let's leave it to manual. So right now we are menu one. So keep pressing this here until you see the uh, channel and ID channel one and channel one right here good id zero 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 you can also change by press this button here to whatever you want click ok go back to the menu number one and to assign a group here make sure you press the ratio which you have group a group b and if you press one more it's going to be a group c right so right now we only have one flash just press the ratio once again. Now let's pretend you have three flashes here. Press the ratio once again. You have A, B, and C. So to change this here, you just press this button here, which is the group. You alternate from A, B, and C. Go back to the letter A. So since you understand now how this works, let me press it once again to simplify. Let me, let's leave it everything as unison. So it doesn't matter here anymore. Now the flash here, on menu one, first thing that we see is the group. Make sure it is set to group A. Now you press the menu button once again, you have the channel. And then by rotating this dial here, you can adjust your channels. Leave it at number one. Press set. Notice that there's no link light over here. So everything is done over here. The ID, channel, and group, and everything. And then to pair everything here, you got to make sure you keep pressing this button here until this link appears. And this thing beeps as well to confirm. Listen. There you go. That should be it. No, not yet. Press it once again. Because you want to master now you want to slave. Now you go. Perfect. You want to change the intensity here. Rotate this dial. For example, full power. There's a beep. Now if you want this flash to be as group B, all you got to do is press on menu 1 the group button, which is this button right here. So whatever settings you have, if you want to jump to the other group, press the group button here. It's going to jump to this one here, and then you can control the intensity here. So right now it's at 128. When you fire, it's going to be very little. Let me actually aim this to the wall here. There you go. Intensity. Full power. There you go. And that's the end of my review. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing to my channel for more contents like this. And if you care to give me a thumbs up, that tells me that I'm doing a good job and I highly appreciate that. And if you want to comment anything, I respond to everything that I see down on the comment session. So once again, thank you for visiting my channel. It was nice to see you guys again and I'll see you next time.